Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to do a video on fluid uh, equations that you're going to see. So I'm going to start off with just the basic equations and then I'm going to make another video uh, which is going to be a continuation of this one but I'm going to add residual uh, residuals in it. So my objectives for today, uh, I'm just going to show you the Maxwell equations. I don't really have much to say because these are going to be more important in class when you're doing proofs, which I'm not doing in my video. Um, so I'm going to show you them so you have an idea of what they are, uh, what they look like, I guess. Uh, then I'm going to give you the equations for entropy, enthalpy, internal energy, and kind of explain um, where I'm going to find the things and to use these equations and when will I know to use which equation because I think that's one of the most important things of thermodynamics is knowing when to use certain equations so um, plugging numbers in is just a different story it's more of understanding how I can use the equations so to start um, these are the Maxwell equations there's four that you're gonna see um, it's just to show they're just partial derivatives uh, and they just show the relationship to get thermodynamic properties so for example the first one on the top left uh, <coughs> relates temperature, molar volume, pressure, entropy with partial derivatives. So I'm talking about this one here. Uh, nothing I'm going to get into that's too deep because, like I said, these are more important for proofs. So yeah, I just want you to take a look and uh, kind of appreciate those. And you, you won't really have to use these uh, when, uh, when calculating because what I'm about to show you is more important. So I'm gonna start with entropy. So these six equations are the ones you're gonna be using in uh, Chi 220. So if you look at equation one, uh, for example, if I needed to know uh, the change in entropy of a process, um, I would do a little integration here. Um, and you could see that uh, I have heat capacity, constant pressure. Uh, I, in my heat effects video, I showed how you can get a correlation for heat capacity from your table. So for example, <coughs> I would get something like uh, A plus BT, so CP is equal, for an ideal gas, let's say, plus CT squared, and let's say there, D is zero. That's the kind of correlation you'd get from your tables. Uh, so if I were to integrate, I would divide everything by T and uh, integrate with respect to temperature. Um, and then right here, you see I have a partial derivative. So in order to use my first equation, I would need to have um, some, uh, some correlation with molar volume uh, where I could do the partial with respect to temperature. So, I don't know, something like uh, PV equals RT, let's say, is, is what I'm given. Um, <coughs> let's, this is like the simplest case. So, I know I could uh, do the derivative with this with respect to temperature. So, I'd say V is equal to R over P. That would be my derivative with respect to or dv over dt. That's what it would give me. What am I writing here? I am so sorry. It would give me this. Not too complicated, not too complicated. And then I would plug that in and I would integrate uh, with respect to pressure because I would just treat r as a constant. Uh, same thing for number two. Same idea, um, CV for constant uh, volume heat capacity is a bit different, but we do know, um, let's say CV is given as a constant, well, I could just integrate with respect to my temperature over here, wouldn't it be too complicated, but the key is if I have an ideal gas, we know CP is equal to CV plus R. So CV is equal to CP minus R. And we know, the key is we know, that CP is something we can get from our tables and we could get a correlation, like what I showed up here. You see that? 
I can bring that there. So for equation number two, let's say I had an ideal gas. I know I can get my heat capacity at constant volume uh, really easily for my species because I'd have my correlation for CP from my tables. Uh, and R is just 8.31, which is a constant. Um, and then I could get CV. But if it's something which is not really an ideal gas or I don't have it as a constant, then this equation, it wouldn't really be useful to me uh, in this class. And same for my partial of pressure. If I'm doing my partial, uh, <coughs> if I have some correlation for pressure and I've got to do the derivative with respect to temperature, um, and I don't have a correlation for this, I, I can't use uh, this equation. Uh, so yeah, then equation number three, you're going to notice CP, DTT, same thing as usual. I already explained that. Um, my beta, though, is what I explained uh, in my video with equations of state. Uh, in this class, you're usually going to see your beta or your kappa used for liquids. Uh, it's either going to be given to you as a constant or you're going to have to kind of manipulate and figure it out with a correlation that you have. So, for example, we know the correlation, we know the definition of beta is one over molar volume, dV over this partial, constant pressure. So that's beta. So if I can't do a partial, uh, if I can't do this partial right here, then I really can't use equation number three because if I don't have some correlation I can work with and do the derivative, then it won't work. And same thing, I would need molar volume um, to get my change in entropy. It, I would need something like that. Same thing for number four, same idea, but we just have a little kappa down here that we can't forget about. And like I said in my equations of state video, I gave you the definitions of beta and kappa, like the equations uh, you can use for them. And then on the bottom, uh, I five and six, I have made it clear that these are for ideal gases. So I'm gonna make these in red. That's that's important. So I can only use these equations where it ex where it says specifically this is an ideal gas. I need you to find the change in entropy for this gas. So that's that's it for entropy. These six equations and the residual ones I'm going to add in after. Um, not too complicated. Next is enthalpy. So it's the same idea. We just have a bit less equations for this one. So equation one, if I want the change in enthalpy for uh, some species, CPDT, I am calculating my heat capacity. Um, like I said, you could get maybe a, you could get a correlation for it from your tables, then uh, integrate it with respect to temperature. Uh, here we have molar volume, uh, temperature, uh, and then we have a partial here. So again, uh, when you see your partials, you're going to have to have a correlation given to you uh, where you're going to be like, OK, I can manipulate my molar volume and now I can do a derivative with respect to temperature. So that's something really important that you're gonna have to look for. And if you don't have that, well, you gotta scratch this equation. I can't use equation number one. And then two, uh, this here, I'm gonna write liquids because usually you're gonna be using beta and kappa for liquids. I'll write that here as well. Liquid, liquid. Ideal gas, ideal gas. Liquids here. And then lastly, uh, pretty straightforward, ideal gas, ideal gas, uh, change in enthalpy, CPDT. So this here is straight from tables, the correlation for your CP. Unless it's given to you as a constant, then when you integrate, it's just it's going to be like 5T, straight from tables. Uh, and again, I went through 
uh, how to use the tables for heat capacity in my equations of, uh, sorry, my heat effects video. Lastly, internal energy. Again, all these follow the same idea. So if I look at my first equation, the change in internal energy uh, is equal to CV dt, which, like I said, I'll, I'll repeat again just so it's clear. This CV, if, if, if ideal gas, if ideal gas, I could say CP is equal to CV plus R. So I can isolate my CV, and this I can get a correlation from tables. So ideal gas is key to use that. If not, CV would be given to you, or correlation for CV will be given to you, because we don't have tables uh, in this course for CV. And you look at your partial, well, can, is that partial pos possible for me to do? If not, scratch the equation. If yes, continue on. Um, same thing with equation two. You're, you see the beta and kappa right here. So again, this is for liquids. And then my bottom equation is ideal gas. So CVDT. Again, this, that CV might have some correlation, which you could integrate with respect to temperature. Uh, or you might be, or well, not you might, you will be able to get it from what I've shown you down here. So you'd say CV is equal to CP minus R. This CP is directly the correlation from your tables. And then you would just integrate all this with respect to temperature. So it would be du is equal to, I don't know, so at plus, sorry, not at, just, let's say we're dealing a plus bt, let's say c and d are zero uh, times r, because remember, we have to remember what our table tells us, it's cp over r is equal to a plus bt, so we got to multiply minus r, all this dt, and then I would just integrate. Pretty straightforward, uh, only three equations there. And then um, overall, I just want to show you a summary of what I've talked about. So I've given you fluid uh, equations for entropy, enthalpy, and internal energy. Um, I just want to highlight that these are for ideal gases these here. Uh, these are for liquids, because in this class, when you use beta and kappa, we're going to be dealing with liquids, uh, typically. Um, and then, yeah, so the three things I want you to look out for, for when you're deciding um, what equation am I going to use, is first, obviously, know if you're looking for entropy, enthalpy, internal energy, that's, that's ideal. But... I want you to look at the state. So do I have, for example, an ideal gas, a liquid, etc. What is the state that I'm in? Does it just say gas or if it says ideal gas, then, oh, okay, I know what my ideal class, gas equations are for each of these properties. Uh, next, I want you guys to look for correlations. So, uh, if I'm given, for example, uh, for enthalpy, equation number one, if I have something where I have molar volume and I could do the partial with respect to temperature uh, at constant pressure, if I can do that derivative, then, okay, this correlation makes sense. I can use it. Uh, I can use it for my enthalpy calculation. And then lastly, the third thing I want you guys to look for is, can I integrate? Can I integrate? So, for example, uh, if I'm looking at uh, equation, uh, I don't know, equation two of entropy, and I've got to integrate 
so I'm looking for a change in entropy. And I've got to integrate uh, with respect to volume, but the integral is so complicated. I'm like, I can't. It's like sines, cosines. Like, this won't happen to you, but let's say, you know, like in real life, like this, it, he, the class won't be this cruel. But, um, you know, can I integrate? Can I integrate this with respect to molar volume? Well, if you can't, well, scratch that. You've got to look for another thing in entropy. What other equation in entropy can I use? So hopefully this is pretty straightforward. I'm going to give you examples, um, a bunch of examples on how to use these equations mixed with residuals, uh, which I'm going to get into in my next video. Uh, and then how do I know, for example, where what molar volume am I plugging in 